Um, thanks for joining me tonight. Now, for those of you that are joining me on my professional page, I will only be able to see my personal page comments this evening, but if you make a comment or if you uh, have a question, please put it in the comment section because I go back and answer every single question on these Monday night shows um, for you guys. So let me do some shout outs so we have. Lot of people joining on the, the personal page. Shout out to Joel Norman, Samantha Taylor, Paige Denise, John Philip Young, Gary Manis, Georgia Stacy, Kyla Bonnie Montgomery, Melissa Begley, and Cleo, two of my favorite girls. Thanks for being here tonight. Hey Chantel, um, Kyla, Nikki, and Jane. Hey to Jane, I haven't heard from you in so long. I hope you're doing okay. Hey to Brittany um, and Zoe, thanks for joining me, and Linda McCauley and Nikki Combs. Hi to all you guys this evening. Thanks for joining me. This topic that we're going to go over this evening, hey to Brittany and Lolly and Paige Denise, thanks for joining um, tonight's topic is, are there ghosts in the desert? And the reason that I'm going over this topic tonight is this is a very special uh, thing to me because um, I think 2009, David and I went on a nursing travel assignment down in Tucson, Arizona, and we were able to go to Tombstone which is one of the top areas that is notably haunted uh, in the desert area. And I'm going to give you guys a little um, take on what I felt when I went to. We did get to go to, to Boot Hill Cemetery, which is a whole lot of fun. Hey to Leslie and Veronica Kennard and Matt Johnson. Thanks for joining. And Janice Chad Rice. Thanks for joining. Um, so we'll go over that on the section that I do on um, Tombstone. But I want to know your thoughts on this. And hey to Doreen Mormon Dietrich. I hope everything is straightened out from the hurricane down there for you guys. Um, let me know in the comments. And if you guys have any questions on this topic, just put that in the comments section and I'll get to your comments and we'll answer some questions. Okay, so my thought on this, shout out to George McKinney and Rhonda Taylor, thanks for joining. Uh, my thought on this is that deserts are one of the most haunted with ghost activity places in the United States. So. If you are a ghost hunter, if you are a spiritual um, investigator or paranormal investigator, this is an area you really have to check out because some of the best evidence in, uh, is really found in the desert. Hey to Betty Jo Coffee Anderson and Mike Thomas. Thanks for joining. So, um, okay. So our adventures into Arizona, we uh, did a lot of hiking. We went on a lot of trails. There are so many trails out into the desert. And when we went out to these trails, you're, you would see like mountain lion paw prints along the trails. So one of the things that I was looking at as I investigated this topic was Adventurers, there were a, so there are so many historical adventurers that went out west and they went out into these trails and areas and became lost and were never seen again. So did mountain lions um, attack them and did they die out there in the on the desert trails? Also, 
Um, did they become lost or confused and got dehydrated and passed away? Um, there's lots of caves and caverns out in the desert and so a lot of those areas can give way and people can fall in and become trapped and pass away in those areas uh, like a cave in there's a lot of old mines in the desert and so those mines carry the energy of those workers that were in there um, so Samantha says the stars in the desert are beautiful at night absolutely and that is one clue to why the deserts are more haunted than cities and, and other places in the United States. Hey to David Riles and Mammy Lawson and Sam Armstrong, thanks for joining me this evening. So some of the things that you can see in the desert are phantom stagecoaches, ghost lights, and we're going to go into this a little bit later. Um, there's specifically one story about the white ghost horse of Velizio and it's Velizio Station and the, supposedly the horse uh, had its owner shot and killed off of its back and so the horse is seen looking for its master which I thought was a really cute story. Um, there's another really famous story about the ghost dancers at Yaqui Will Well in Anza Borrego Desert. And supposedly that story goes that three immigrants were traveling from Yuma, Arizona to California, and they're seen at this particular Yaqui, Yaqui Well and on hot summer nights during a full moon and they join hands uh, one of them comes up out of the well one of them comes up out of the mud and one of them comes up out of the brush I think and they join hands and their energies kind of rotate around and then disappear and this has been seen by hundreds of people hey to Marnie Moreno and Rachel Colton and Tasha Lynette House thanks for joining this evening so these are some of the things that you can expect to see um, when you go out west. I want to go over places to see particular hauntings or ghosts out west in the desert. And one of the biggest places that they say that you need to go is on, it's Anza Borrego Desert. Okay, so this is a state park and there's a springs also it's a state park and springs and this is in California um, and so the first thing that you can expect to see is the lady in white and she appears at Valencia station and then also in this particular area there's a phantom stagecoach of Carrizio that passes through the Carrizio wash now that I would love to see that if I had known about this beforehand I would love to see and any of you guys that are avid ghost hunters or paranormal investigators go ahead right now and take a second and get a piece of paper and start jotting this these locations down um, because I can attest to tombstone um, but you're gonna want to write some of this stuff down for these other areas because I want to, you know, save up and plan for a trip in one of these areas. So the Valencia station is um, referenced in more than one thing that I uh, investigated on this. So the Phantom Stagecoach would be an awesome sight to see. Now, there's also in the Borregio Desert, the goat, they have had hundreds of people that have witnessed the ghost lights of Borregio since 1958, documented since 1958. Um, a lot of similar reports of these ghost lights out in this desert state park. Also, this was so interesting, and this was seen at in between the mountains and the 17 palms area 
of the state park is an eight foot tall skeleton. <laughs> that would be so awesome to see. Can you imagine getting that on camera or video? That would be just crazy awesome. Um, again, the ghost dancers at Yaqui Well are very noted for activity, and so you should really go and try to see that one. Now, here's the one that that I experienced, and me and David can attest to this, is Tombstone, Arizona. So several places in Tombstone, Arizona you can go. The first big place is Birdcage Theater. Now, the activity that they say happens at the Birdcage Theater is like audio anomalies in the balcony area. Um, so you can definitely go and try to view that. Hey to Devlet McDonald and Kathleen McCauley and Craiger Steven. Thanks for joining this evening. Hey to Judy Burdett Roberts and Christine Williams and Angel Michelle Steger and Kitty Littrell. Rachel Colton, hey you guys. Thanks for joining me this evening. If you guys have any questions about any of these areas, please put it in the comment section and be glad to answer it for you. Okay, so the Bird Cage Theater, there's a lot of audio type of uh, anomalies that are in the balcony area that people uh, report. And then this is the one that I'm really stoked about is Boot Hill Cemetery. Now, when David and I went to this travel assignment in Arizona, in Tucson, uh, we did get to go out to Boot Hill Cemetery. And I did uh, sense several spirits kind of milling in and around that area and around one grave in particular. And this one grave had like iron bars all around it iron like an iron fence and the grave site was concrete I think and um, what I found so interesting and it did I did feel a male spirit like standing next to it there was a huge it was about this big there was a huge like red agate that was embedded into the top of the um, gravestone, in, into the top of this concrete gravestone. That was absolutely fascinating, and I did feel that male spirit around that grave. And I wanted to know more, but we just didn't have time to find out. So I really reg regret that, not knowing the history behind that huge agate that was embedded into the gravestone and I think I may have some pictures of that that I can go back and find and if I can find that picture what I'll do is I'll put it in the comments so that you guys can see it because it was just absolutely fascinating and then there was an area like when you go into the tombstone into Boot Hill Cemetery there was an area behind the cemetery I did see about seven male figures that were all lined up kind of just watching the cemetery and I felt like that they were making sure that people weren't going to mess with anything or change anything and they seemed like just kind of guardians that were standing there so let me see who else has joined hey to Leah Plack, Crystal Laird, Christopher Magger thanks for joining me this evening and April Bulin and Tammy Beaver Middleton um, thanks for joining you guys so Tombstone was really really big for me and David we had a huge great time down there um, Boot Hill Cemetery. That is one of the most haunted places. I had a great time. I saw a lot of, a lot of dead people around here. Oh, it was so much fun. Um, it did feel kind of weird. We didn't go 
to any of the little shops or the places in Tombstone, but so I'm just going to give you what the research says that um, one of the other most haunted places is Big Nose Kate's Saloon and the Aztec House Antique Shop. And also, I found this interesting, uh, the Wells Fargo Bank Building is reportedly one of the most haunted places in Tombstone, Arizona. Um, I absolutely loved to, uh, Tucson when we were down there. Um, if you wanted to go for a hike in the desert, you were there in 15 minutes, and if you wanted to go up to the Rencons and ski, you could be there in 45 minutes. And so there was a vast, you know, array of things that you could you could do in Tucson, and the food was absolutely fabulous there. Just so you know. <laughs> hey to Tammy Beaver Middleton and Mitch Colley and Ethel Martin and Snow Turner. Kisses to Snow. And Samantha says she went to Death Valley this summer and she felt a heavy feeling. Absolutely, go by your feeling. That's a clairsentient uh, psychic ability, Samantha. So you may want to study that a little bit. There's a book on Amazon called The Psychic Empath that you may want to get. Uh, and I'll put a link in the comment section later for you guys. Um, because all of you people that go by that clairsentient feeling, um, it's probably a book that you should get and study because it can really help you out with controlling that ability. Because that ability uh, really can control you instead of you controlling it. So I highly suggest that book, and I'll put it in the comments for you. Okay, moving right along, like Arizona is covered up with... Uh, paranormal activity. The Dragoon Mountains between the Dragoons and Wilcox, Arizona, there's a phantom train and it's it's been reportedly seen and heard by hundreds of people documented. But the interesting thing about this particular anomaly is that there have been no train tracks in that area ever and no train reported to have ever run in that area. So what's the explanation on that? I would love to be able to go back down there and investigate that myself and see what information that I can derive as a medium um, for why that has occurred. Now this is another place that David and I got to go is Bisbee, Arizona because I'm a, I'm a huge turquoise fan. And the lavender pit is in Bisbee. And I got I got a ring. It's an antique ring and it's like one of the last pieces that was um taken from the lavender pit. And so um I really, really wanted to see Bisbee. So we went to Bisbee. Now there are a couple of places in Bisbee that are reportedly very, very, uh, got a lot of activity. The Clawson House Inn has reportedly four ghosts, three miners who were murdered in 1890, and also the proprietor of uh, the inn, Mrs. Clawson, reportedly haunts the grounds as well. Um, another place that was in Bisbee that we didn't get to go, but I wish we had, was the Oliver House Bed and Breakfast. That reportedly has five spirits, lots of activity, and uh, supposedly it's all surrounding room 13. So let me check and make sure that we don't have any questions. Hey, Young Lee and Robin Barber Wells and Barbara Bacon. Um, thanks for joining us this evening. Again, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to type them out. Um, okay. Jeremy, Arizona, and I didn't get to go here either, is known as the whole town is haunted, supposedly in Jeremy. So we start off with the United Verde Hospital on Cleopatra Hill. And so the most of the reports on this place have been like audible moaning and yelling uh, in the hospital and um, a lot of like audio 
type of things are happening with people. Um, okay, Phelps Dodge Mine near uh, Jeremy State Historical Park. And this is reports of a ghost miner who lost his head. So they call him Headless Charlie. And there are a lot of reports of this headless guy roaming around in Jeremy, Arizona. <laughs> so that was really cool. I really like that one. Um, this was another good one. The Old Company Clinic in Jeremy. Um, they have multiple, multiple reports of um, ghosts of former patients, doctors, and nurses. And I can tell you being an an old ICU nurse of 25 years, that has to be H E double L <laughs> to be stuck at work forever. <laughs> so I would have I would if I went there I would have to try to cross those people over rather than leaving them there at work. <laughs> that would be awful. Um, Here's another good one, the Superstition Mountains. Have you guys ever heard of the Superstition Mountains? This is, um, and some of you have probably heard of this, the Lost Dutchman Mine. Who has heard of the Lost Dutchman Mine? Chime in and tell me if you have. Hey to Misty Mays, Wesley McDonald, and Pam Lowe. Thanks for joining me. So... The Lost Dutchman Mine is like a 120-year-old legend about uh, some hidden gold. And to date, there are documented at least 75 people have been recorded lost, missing, or murdered trying to find this gold in the Lost Dutchman Mine. So I, that's another place. I wouldn't suggest you go and look for it. <laughs> Because you don't want to be number 76. Um, and this was really cool, too. Rhyolite, Nevada. And, you know, it's spelled differently, but Rhyolite is actually a gemstone. And so when I saw this uh, piece of evidence about Rhyolite, I was thinking, is, is that maybe the place that they were mining this gemstone? I'm not sure, but I will look into it and see if it is. But um, I did see the picture of these life-sized figures, and it was really, really freaky. Uh, supposedly, this Belgian artist um, put these statues up in Rhyolite, Nevada, in the middle of nowhere. And it's a whole slew of them. And they're all white, and they're all uh, figure life-sized figures that are draped in like white robes there's no faces and and the hands are out, out like this okay and they look like ghosts but what he what the artist was trying to portray was the last supper but it looks so creepy you guys got to go online and look at that picture because it is just absolutely like super, super creepy. Let me check and make sure we don't have any questions. Um, so, hey to Angie Kendrick. George has a question. It's supposed to be cursed, the lost Dutchman mine. Yes, absolutely, George. And a lot of the people that go in search of this end up in tragedy or, or they're never heard from again. So, there's a lot of... Um, stories around the Lost Dutchman mine for sure. Hey to Joyce Sells and Samantha has a question. Does clear sentience involve picking up on people's emotions or pain? Yes, absolutely, Samantha. And what I'll do is not too long ago we did those two episodes on what does it mean to be a clear sentient. And so when you're clear sentient, what that actually means is your perception of the environment it works through this ability of feeling. Um, your subconscious filter is constantly drawing in information to see how you feel about it. And other people's emotions you connect with immediately because it is that is 
feeling. And so if it's if that ability, if you have that ability, which most people do, because that's a basic ability of how you analyze your environment. Um, if you're not in control of that ability, that can really hugely wreck your life because then other people's emotions are affecting you and you're picking up stuff from other places that can uh, really skew the way that you think about things because uh, unless you practice that ability and delineate between what is your emotion and what are other people's emotions, living or dead, um, then those influences can really affect the way that you think about things and the way that you feel about things. So it's a big process learning how to um, pull those two energies apart and keep them apart. But it's one of the best abilities when you're going out, as I do as a medium, when you're going out to sense an area, the first thing that you're going to pick up on is the feeling of it and how does it feel and who's there and what um, type of entity you feel is the very first thing or the very first information that I get. So Samantha says that she missed them. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, I'll put a link in the comments for you uh, later on. I'll put a link for both videos for you. Um, so she says last night she kept seeing a, a dark crouching figure. It's very overwhelming when it hits her. It can be, but um, I do have an online course about how to control clairsentient uh, and the empathic feeling, and I'll get that loaded up on the website next week. Unfortunately, and I have to announce this, I've had an ET shop since 2010 that had all my online courses on it, and a week ago I got a, <laughs> I got an email saying that. Uh, your courses are supernatural and we don't support that any longer and we just took all your listings off. So I haven't had time to reload them up onto my website and I would have to deliver the material manually. It's kind of sad that they pulled the rug out from under me after all these years, but it happens and and we're gonna we're gonna go on and I will find another platform and I may just leave them on my website and just do manual delivery for you guys that are interested. So um, enough of that. Um, I wanted to go into why the desert and why these areas are so have so much more activity than cities or you know the East Coast. Why the West? the West has so much more activity or why are these areas so much more haunted than others? Why are these areas such a good place for people who investigate in the paranormal or, or ghost hunt uh, to get evidence? Because some of the best evidence that we have to date is from some of these places out West. So let me check and make sure there's no more questions. So Betty Jo ask is the moon causing more activity at this time absolutely Betty if you follow my daily uh, planetary influences that are post on Facebook you can see that today's planetary influence were like 83 percent waxing now so the closer you get to the full moon the more the energies are elevated and the more activity that you're gonna see hey to Heather and Laura um, don't worry, Laura, you can go back and watch this. And don't forget, you guys, all of these episodes are loaded up onto my YouTube channel. Um, and then you can go back and watch all the past episodes of Monday Night Live in Lexington on my YouTube channel. And I'll leave the link in the comment section. So back to why I think the desert is the most haunted place on Earth. <laughs> okay. Number one, there's less of an electromagnetic field disturbance out there in the desert. Okay, it's sparsely populated. There's less electromagnetic interference with the spirits. As you know, spirits are made up of electromagnetic energy. 
they set up a web of it's like a pattern of their area of what they want to see what they want to experience if and they can experience the past so they set up this web of energy and they're experiencing their own um, cognizant memories there's less electromagnetic frequencies to interrupt that or to cause disruption of it um, so that makes it perfect for spirits um, that want to have those memories and experience things in their own dynamic um, so Samantha says I think it's because of Native Americans that lived on the land and they knew which areas should be stayed away from that can figure into it as well Samantha there are a lot of areas that um, Native Americans set up protective grids a protective energy grid around and so that uh, repels a lot of things out of there uh, and she also says I know that there have been portals out there there are many many portals out west and I think it has to do with the fact that there's um, these geomagnetic lines that run through the area and especially Sedona so one of the theories that I've had throughout the years is the reason why spirits go to attics basements closets and even corners of the room is because they and we still can we can measure mass of a spirit because they've um, done weight measurements on people before they pass away and then after they pass away and the difference between that weight measurement is one gram now that's an extreme amount of mass for an energetic uh, conglomerate so spirits still exist in a in mass in some type of mass and they that one gram or one cc can expand and contract but it still it doesn't like to be interrupted it doesn't like to be walked through or disturbed or um, anything like that so if they pull back to these areas that are low traffic like basements attics closets um, their mass is not interrupted and so that's another reason why I think that deserts are ideal for spirits is because their energy patterns are not disturbed as much as high traffic areas like our cities there's constantly electromagnetic frequencies flying about people coming and going and um, a lot of disturbance of these energy patterns that are set up in the environment so hey to Katie and Marion hey to Rolando and Pam and Julia thanks for joining me now we're fixing to we're fixing the sign out I want to let you guys know that I'm going to be on the North American Paranormal Psychic and Paranormal Network on Thursday nights now I've got a, a little slot on Thursday nights it's 10 o'clock for you guys that like to stay up late um, but you can you can get the application tiny chat and then just type in in a PPN on Thursday night at 10 and I'm gonna you can chat with me there if you're a late sleeper but I want to leave you guys with this last little thing that I found and this was so cool because it involved Kentucky and um, it also involved the Southwest as well so um, I read this and it was this was so neat you just got to listen to this so the Loretto Chapel's miracle staircase has anybody heard about that have, have you guys heard about that hey to autumn law um, so we everybody knows that Loretto Kentucky has a convent and the sisters of Loretto live there well it seems back in the 1800s 
some of the nuns from our Loretto, Kentucky, went to Santa Fe, New Mexico to open a girls' school. Now, they, they built the girls' school, but whoever built it, I can't remember why, but there was not a staircase that was installed to the balcony for the choir. And so they were out of money. They didn't know what to do. So what they did was they invoked an ancient ritual of a collective nine-day prayer to St. Joseph for a solution to the staircase. Okay. On the end of the, the last of the nine days, an old man appeared with very few tools. And the next day, he started work. He was looking for work. The next day, he started work. But he started his work in seclusion and isolation with just these very few tools and made the most beautiful 33-step spiral staircase. It does not have a support in the middle. It still exists to this day. You have to go look at pictures of this. It is absolutely amazing. The Loretto Chapel Miracle Staircase. Google it, hit images, and go, oh my gosh. So that's all for this evening. Kisses from Kentucky.